Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back. This is the 19th lecture of Engineering Economy. So again, uh, we are continuing to solve end of chapter 5 problems. Uh, so this is the first problem that we are going to solve for today, which is problem number 5043. So use an 8-year analysis period and a 10% interest rate to determine which alternative should be selected. So we have two alternatives, A and B, right? And the useful life of alternative A is different from the one from the alternative B. So we may uh, select an analysis period, which is the least common multiple of these two numbers, four years and eight years. So we would compare the eight-year life of alternative B against an initial purchase of alternative A plus its replacement with a, with a new alternative A in four years. Okay? So let's draw the cash flow diagram first. So we are working on problem number 5-43. And for the option A, the cash flow diagram would be like this. So the first cost of $5,300 are required, right? And then uniform annual benefits of eighteen hundred dollars. So you have uniform annual benefits of eighteen hundred dollars, right? For the next four years, because the useful life of alternative A is four years. And then in year four is replacement with new alternative A. So again, you need to pay $5,300. So one, two, three, and four. And then this new alternatives, new replacement has another useful life of four years. Five, six, seven, eight, like this, okay? So here, you know that this part Is about the original investment, right? And then this part corresponds to the replacement investment. So here, we can get the net present worth for this alternative A. So net present worth of eight years of alternative A.
that's going to be the $1,800 over 8 years. So it's going to be P given A. And the interest rate we are going to use is 10%. 10% over 8 years, right? And minus $5,300 at the end of period 0. And then another $5,300 at the end of period 4, right? So 5300 And then this $5,300 should be converted to the equivalent present sum. So you need to multiply by this vector P given, sorry, this is P given F and 10% over four years, right? So let's get these table values. P given A for 10%, which can be found in page number 613 of our textbook. So P given A over A periods is 5.335. So this is the 5.335. Okay. And P given F over four period is 0 0.6830. This is 0 0.6830. So how much is that in total? going to be $683 and 10 cents. Okay. Now draw the cash flow diagram for alternative B. So for alternative B, the first cost of $10,700 are required. And alternative B also, re um, alternative B has a longer life of eight years, and each year does produce Benefits of twenty one hundred dollars, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And uniform amount of twenty one hundred dollars, right? Again, we are going to use 10% of interest rate. So the net present worth of alternative B can be obtained by $2,100 P given A, 10% over A period minus the present value, present, the, what is that, the first cost at the end of period zero, which is $10,700, right? 
And the P given A, 10% over A period, was 5.335, right? So this is the 5.335. So how much is this? That is $503.50. So now, what you need to do is compare these two numbers. Not net present worth of eight years of alternative A provides $683.10. And the net present worth of alternative B, okay, maybe that is better. Alternative B is $503.50. So which one you need to choose? You need to choose alternative A, right? Simply because it does provide the larger benefit. Okay. Then next problem we are going to solve is uh, okay. what about problem five five dash sixty five. Using the capitalized cost, determine which type of road surface is preferred on a particular section of highway. And then you are required to use 12% of interest rate. So again, we have two alternatives, A and B. Okay. And in this problem, we are required to use the concept of capitalized cost, right? And the capitalized cost equation which says P equals A over I. This capitalized cost equation is applied when there are end of period disbursements A. So for option A, for option A, the initial cost of $500,000 is required plus the annual maintenance cost of $35,000. So, um, Let's compute the capitalized cost. For option A, okay? So let me put subscript of A like this. So first, we are required to consider $500,000 of initial cost and then annual maintenance cost, which is $35,000. So we need to use this equation. So divide by 12% of interest rate, right? So divide by 0 0.12 plus we need to consider the $350,000 because the periodic resurfacing is required every 10 years, okay? So first we need to compute an end of period disbursement A, which is equivalent to $350,000 every 10 years, which is a equals $350,000 times A given F, 
25% of interest rate after 10 years, right? So 12% interest rate A given F over 10 period is 0 0.0570. This is 0 0.0 five seven zero so how much is this this is the problem number five dash sixty five okay this is the nineteen thousand nine hundred fifty dollars okay so the capitalized cost becomes this value nineteen thousand nine hundred fifty dollars divided by same interest rate twelve percent so divided by point zero two So how much is the capitalized cost for option A? This is the nine hundred fifty seven thousand and nine hundred twenty dollars. Okay, so this is the capitalized cost for option A. Now let's compute capitalized cost for option B. For option B, the capitalized cost can be computed by 700,000 as the initial cost. And then also we need to consider annual maintenance cost and periodic resurfacing cost every 15 years. Okay. So $25,000 as the annual maintenance divided by same interest rate, 12% plus the, again, we need to compute at end of period disbursement A, which is equivalent to $450,000 every 15 years. So A is 450000 times A given F, 12%, but this time over 15 periods, right? So how much is that? percent a given f over 15 periods is 0 0.0268 0 0.0268 0 0.0268 okay so how much is this okay this is a 12,000 and sixty dollars. Okay. So the capitalized cost for option B can be computed by summation of these three three values, right? Point zero two. So how much is that?
and this is the one million. All right. One million and eight thousand eight hundred thirty dollars. So this is the capitalized cost for option B. So by comparing these two numbers, this is the capitalized cost from option A, and this is the capitalized cost from option B. So which option you need to select? The option A is preferable, right? Because it does provide smaller capitalized cost. Right? So I would choose option A in this case. Okay, then how about problem five dash forty five? Okay, an engineer has received two bids for an, il for an elevator to be installed in a new building. The bids plus his evaluation of the elevators are tabulated. So given a 10% interest rate, which bid should be accepted? So again, we have two different options, right? Westing home and it is. So it does listed in installation cost and its useful lives and annual cost and service values after its use after its useful life. Okay. So but in this case two elevators have different useful lives, ten years and fifteen years. So you may want to select an analysis period of 30 years, right? Which is the least common multiple of these two numbers, 10 and 15. So, you are working on problem number 5-45. And for the first case, Westing Home. Uh, let's draw the cash flow diagram first. So for Westing Home, we will consider an initial purchase of an elevator which is $45,000 plus its replacement with new elevator in 10 years and 20 years as well. Right? So the corresponding cash flow diagram would be like this. So initial cost of 45000 45K. $45,000. And then the annual cost of $2,700 are required. Up until, let's say, 30 years, right? So there is an annual cost of twenty seven hundred 
equals 2700, right? And let's say somewhere here, 10 years. Um, Sorry, maybe let me redraw the diagram. Here we have initial cost of forty-five thousand dollars, and then let's say at the end of period ten, there is a service values of three thousand dollars, right? Three k. And there is an annual cost of twenty-seven hundred dollars, right? However, in year ten, we need to consider the new replacement, right? New elevator. So you need to invest another forty-five thousand dollars at the end of period ten, which will have our service values of three thousand dollars at the end of period twenty, right? Of course, in the meantime. Every year, there is an annual cost of $2,700, right? And then again, at the end of year 20, we need to consider another new replacement, another new elevator. So you need to invest another 40 Forty-five thousand dollars, which will have uh, service values at the end of period thirty, which is three thousand dollars. And in the meantime, every year you need to pay for annual cost of twenty-seven hundred dollars. Okay, so this is the cash flow diagram for Westing home case. And we are going to use the interest rate of 10%, okay? So now let's get the present worth of cost. Present worth of cost of 30 years of Westing home. That's going to be 45,000 at the end of period zero. So simply you can add $45,000. Also, you need to consider $2,700 over the next 30 periods. So $2,700, P given A, 10% over 30 periods, right? And then what else? At the end of period 10, 45,000 minus 3,000. That is the service value. That is your benefit. Benefit is negative cost. So negative 3K at the end of period 10, right? So you need to convert it to the equivalent present sum. So you need to multiply this vector, P given F, 10% over 10 periods, right? 
So similar way, at the end of period 20, 45,000 minus 3,000. And then P given F 10% over 20 periods, right? Plus the last one. At the end of period 30, 3,000, or you got to put negative sign here, right? Because there's a service value. Negative 3,000, P given F 10% over 30 periods. And the 10% interest rate can be found page number 613 of our text. P given A over 30 periods is 9.427. 9.427. What about P given F over 10 periods? 0 0.3855, 0 0.3855. And how about this? P given F over 20 periods. That is 0 0.1486. And P given F over 30 periods is 0 0.0573. Okay, this is 0 0.0573. So the values, okay. So how much is that? This is going to be 92,713 dollars. Okay, 92,713 dollars. Okay, then what about the alternative? It is. For it is we have very similar cash flow cash flow diagram. Okay. So for the option it is initial cost of fifty four thousand dollars are required, but this option has longer life. 15 years, right? And the annual cost of $2,850 and service values at the end of 15 years is $4,500. So initial cost of $54,000 required. And at the end of period 15, there is a service values of $45,000. Hundred dollars, right? And then each year there is a annual cost of twenty eight hundred and fifty dollars, two thousand eight hundred fifty dollars.
And also we need to consider is replacement with new elevator in year 15. So you need to spend another $54,000 at the end of period 15. And this new elevator has an, another 15 years of useful life. So at the end of period 30, there is a service value of 4,500. And during the meantime, each year, you need to spend annual cost of $2,850, okay? Again, we will use the same interest rate of 10%, okay? So the present worth of cost of 30 years of this would be $54,000 plus annual cost of $2,850 over 30 periods, right? So P given A 10% over 30 years plus at the end of year 15, 54,000 minus 4,500. And this value need to be converted to equivalent present sum of money. So it's going to be P given F. 10% over 15 periods, right? And then, at the end of period 30, there is a service value. So, minus 4,500. Again, this service value at the end of period 30 should be converted to equivalent present sum of money. So, it's going to be P given F 10% over 30 periods, okay? And we know that from the Westing home case, this is 9.427. And this is the point zero five seven three. Is that right? And what about this? P given F over fifteen periods. P given F over fifteen periods. Point two three nine four. So this is the point two three nine four. Now, how much is this? The present worth of cost of it is, alternative it is. So it is bid as $92,459, okay? So what is your conclusion? You need to compare these two numbers, $92,713, which is the present worth of cost for Westing home bids 
and $92,459. That is the present worth of cost for it is bid. As you can see here, the it is bid has a slightly lower cost. So you gotta choose it is bid. Okay. Okay. Then what about uh, next problem? Um, now we are, we are going to solve problem number 5-52. Uh, this problem is about, again, about the capitalized cost. So a small dam was constructed for $2 million. The annual maintenance cost is $15,000. If interest is 5%, compute the capitalized cost of the dam, including the maintenance. Okay. So this is the problem number. Five dash fifty two. Again, the capitalized cost equation P equals A over I is applied when there are end of period disbursements A, right? So, first, initial cost of two million dollars are required. The capital the cost be two million dollars plus annual maintenance cost of fifteen thousand dollars right so fifteen thousand dollars divide by I what is I which is given as 5%, so 0 0.05, okay? We know that for n goes plus infinite, a becomes p times i from this, right? So this will give you the capitalized cost for this case. So how much is this? So this is going to be 300,000. So 2 million plus 300,000 would be 2.3 million dollars. Okay. So this is the capital capitalized cost of the dam, including the maintenance cost which is very simple. Okay. What about the next problem? Problem number 5-54. Okay, what amount of money deposited 50 years ago at 8% interest would provide a perpetual payment of $10,000 a year beginning this year. Okay, so the amount of money needed now to begin the perpetual payment is $10,000 divided by 8 percent, 0 0.08, right? So how much is this? One, two, five, one, two, 
So is it $125,000, right? Because again, we use the capitalized cost equation, which is P equals A over I, right? And the amount of money that would need to have been deposited 50 years ago at 8% interest rate can be obtained by P equals this number, 125000 $125,000 times P given F, right? 8% over 50 years, right? So how much is this? P given F 8% over 50 periods. That is 0 0.0213. 0 0.0213. So how much is this? Okay, so this is the So if you deposit, if you deposited $2,000, $2,662 50 years ago, then it would provide a perpetual payment of $10,000 a year beginning this year, okay? Assuming the interest rate is 8%. Okay, uh, next problem that we are going to solve is 5-56. Dr. Fogg, professor is retiring and wants to endow a chair of engineering econ economics at his university. It is expected that he will need to cover an annual cost of $100,000 forever. What lump sum must he donate to the university today if the endowment will earn 10% interest? Okay, so he will need to cover an annual cost of $100,000 forever. So. This is the problem number 5-56. So you need to cover an annual cost of $100,000 forever, right? So n goes to plus infinite, right? We know that for n plus n equals plus infinite, a becomes p times i, right? Because the capitalized cost equation, p equals a over i, right? So we want to calculate the capitalized cost here. That is A over I, right? So $100,000 divided by 10% of interest rate, so 0 0.10. So how much is this? That is one million dollars. Okay. 
So he need to donate one million dollars to the university today, okay? To cover annual cost of hundred thousand dollars forever. Okay, so this is the next problem that we are going to solve. Problem number 5-61. A trust fund is to be established for the three purposes. One, to provide $750,000 for the construction and $250,000 for the initial equipment of a small engineering laboratory, and two, to pay the $150,000 per year laboratory operating cost, and three, to pay for $100,000 of replacement equipment every four years, beginning four years from now on. At 6% interest, how much money is required in the trust fund to provide for the laboratory and equipment and its perpetual operation and equipment replacement. So we want to know how much money is required re is required in the trust fund in an infinite analysis period. That is, we want to calculate the perpetual, uh, I'm sorry, we want to calculate the capitalized cost again, right? So we are working in problem 5-61. And the trust fund has three components, right? The trust fund has three components. What are they? One, the present sum of money, one billion dollars, one million dollars, right? The present sum of money, P, is one million dollars because the seven hundred fifty dollars for the construction and two hundred fifty dollars for the initial equipment okay this is came from seven hundred fifty K for the construction and two hundred fifty K for the initial equipment, okay? And next component, annual payment of $150, $150,000 for laboratory operating cost. So annual payment of $150,000. For laboratory operating cost. So in this case, for n equals plus infinite, we use capitalized cost p equals a over i. So a is given as 150,000 and i, the interest rate is 6 percent, 0 0.06. So how much is this? Two and five, and then and two is two point five million dollars, right? Two point five million dollars. How about the last component? We also need to consider 
$100,000 every four years. So first, we need to compute equivalent end of end of period payments A. So A equals hundred thousand dollars times A given F six percent over four years. Okay. So how much is this? A given F six percent. over four periods is 0.2286. This is 0.2286 times $100,000 would be $22,860, okay? And the present worth of this money for an infinite analysis period would be P equals A over I. A is 22,860. And then divide by same interest rate, 6%, 0 0.06. So how much is this? This is the three hundred eighty-one thousand dollars. Okay. Now we can obtain the capitalized cost based on these three components, right? So the capitalized cost. is first of all one million dollar one million dollar plus two point five million dollar two point five million dollar plus three hundred eighty one thousand dollar okay three hundred eighty one thousand dollars so if you combine all together how much is this going to be three million and eight hundred eighty one thousand dollars okay so this is the capital capitalized cost that we are looking for okay um, okay let's solve one more problem. Next problem that we are going to solve is okay, what about okay, what about problem number Local Symphony Association offers memberships as follows. The first type of membership is continuing membership, which requires the annual membership fees of 
$15. And second type of membership is called Patron Lifetime Membership, which require one time of $375. And the patron, the patron uh, membership has been based on the symphony, symphony association's belief that it can obtain a 4% 4, 4 rate of return on its investment. If you believed 4% to be an appropriate rate of return, would you be willing to purchase the patron membership? Why or why not? OK, so we want to compare two different memberships, right? Continuing membership and lifetime membership. Okay, so we are solving the problem number 5-63. Okay. So let me rewrite down this two memberships, continuing membership per year, which require $15 per year, right? And patron lifetime membership, lifetime membership. It does require one single payment of $375. And the $375 invested at 4%. Interest produces a perpetual annual income of fifteen dollars. Perpetual annual income of fifteen dollars. Okay. So we know that P equals A over I, right? So A is P times I. In this case, $375 times 4%, which is 0 0.04. I believe this should be same as $15, okay? But this is not quite the situation here, okay? Let's draw the cash flow diagram. So you need to pay fifteen dollars each year for continuing membership, right? So you need to pay fifteen dollars each year for the continuing membership. So A equals fifteen dollars for continuing membership. And you just need to pay one time of $375, $375 for lifetime membership. Okay. Now, let's calculate for what value of n 
let's say some air here. So one, two. We have n. Okay, some air down here. And let's cal let's calculate what value of n, which is for what value of interest period based on the four percent of interest rate, these cash flows have a present value of zero, okay? So, 375 from the, uh, from the lifetime membership is equal to $15 plus 15 P given A, 4% over N periods, okay? If you solve this equation, then you should be able to get the correct value of n, okay? Where this cash flow has a present value of zero, okay? So here, P given A, 4% over over n period is how much? 360 divided by 15. How much is that? 24. This is the 24, right? Okay. So if you look for the compound interest table, 4% which is provided by six, page number 606 in our text. P given A and the value of 24 is somewhere between N is 80 and 85, right? Somewhere between 80 and 85 years. And actually, if you want to um, get the exact value of n, then you may want to use the um, linear interpolation. Okay. And I want you to double check this that from my previous calculation. If you use the linear interpolation, then you will get the n value is equal to 82, okay? Based on linear interpolation. That we've learned earlier in this class, okay? So the lifetime membership is not economically sound unless you expect to be active for more than 82 years. Is that correct? But that's probably not why people buy the lifetime membership or avoid buying them. Probably the people, people buy lifetime membership because of um, because of special benefits, such as advanced ticket ordering privileges. You know, the special members can purchase uh, special tickets prior to the public on sale date. Or some types of uh, merchandise discounts at the official symphony gift shops and so on. But anyhow, we can answer this question based on engineering economics. Uh, engineering economies, the perspective, okay, like this way. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for today. And looks like um, we're going to spend one more hour to solve end of chapter five problems.
And then the following lecture, we're going to talk about chapter 6. Okay. Thank you very much. See you next time.